the New York Congressman, House Democratic Caucus Chairman Joe Crowley, former Vermont Governor and Democratic National Committee Chairman Howard Dean, and 2016 Presidential Candidate for the Independent Party, Evan McMullen. Evan, first to you. Um, look, the 100 days is sort of a silly construct, and if he does pass, uh, get health care passed and tax reform this year, no one's going to remember whether he did it in the first 100 days or sure. not. But uh, I, I think that it's fair to say is that uh, it's, he's not, it's not as easy as he thought it was, and he admits it. No, I think that's true, and he does admit it by his own admission. This is harder than it, than he thought it would be. I think he's in over his head, but I think his his supporters priced that into the experience to a degree, and that's why you don't see his support base shrinking too far. I mean, it's already relatively small. It certainly hasn't expanded. That's a problem, uh, but I think people who sent Donald Trump to Washington they are looking for disruption in Washington and they are still willing to let him figure it out. How long that's going to last, I don't know, but they're still with him. Governor, um, has the president, uh, he still has his base. What do you make of that? Uh, I, I think that Evan's exactly right. I think his base is hardcore. They really don't, they, they sort of expected him not to be truthful. I mean, they, they sort of knew that it's baked in, uh, but his base is not that big. He's at 38% favorability, something like that. You can peel a little more of that off of that. Uh, but don't forget, Richard Nixon had a 29% positive rating on the day he resigned in disgrace. So Trump's only about nine points away from that. I, I, I think he's, you know, I think he's in over his head. I agree. Evan's right. Congressman, um, I mean, obviously you're a Democrat, you're your opposing party, but tell me, what has President Trump did that you think is reasonably good or well, and what are you critical of at this point? Well, I think he may have given us a new adage, if you don't succeed in your first 100 days, double down on your rhetoric. Uh, I'm not so sure that's a good thing to do, quite frankly, right now. You know, it's, it's, it's very difficult for me to really uh, give an honest assessment of what he's done in a positive way. I mean, I guess we haven't gone to war. Um, that's probably a good thing. Um, you know, but uh, it, it really has, I think, been a very disappointing uh, first 100 days. I think people feel very stressed. Uh, the attack on women, uh, women's rights, uh, on, on reproductive rights, I think on the environment. Uh, you know, we've seen marches by women, by immigrants, by scientists, uh, by environmentalists. Uh, and so I, I, it's really hard for me to stretch to find out anything positive in the first 100 days. Governor, you know, it's interesting. I, I think when I, I said it called the president transparent, I mean, his Twitter, I mean, he goes directly to the American people or to his 25, 50 million people that are followed. He also gives a lot of interviews. He says things off the top of his head like, well, the job was a lot harder than I thought it was. I mean, it's sort of interesting is that he certainly is bringing us inside his head a lot. Well, except that a lot, most of the stuff he says on Twitter is just totally untrue, and I think his followers know it. You know, I just read a story in the Manchester Guardian that's pretty much hot off the press that says the British intelligence agencies have documentation of him, his campaign people going over and, and meeting with Russian agents and arranging payment for doing certain things to help the Russians ha uh, ha hack, to pay for the hackers. I don't know if that's true, but the Guardian is a pretty reputable uh, paper. If that turns out to be true, his presidency is over. Whether he gets impeached or not is immaterial. He'll have no credibility on the world stage or at home. So there's a lot of stuff going on here that's a really big deal. He's in hot water every day, and he's lasted a lot longer than I thought he was going to be. I thought he was going to be gone after the first two or three primaries. So I obviously have no track record on prediction. But the, the water gets hotter and hotter every day for this guy. Evan, um, do you think he likes the job? I mean, to, I know he says it's harder. He says he misses his old life. It's pretty early to it's pretty early to have sort of buyer's remorse if you don't if you miss your old life. Yeah, but I can sympathize with to a small degree, uh, you know, having a life that changes very quickly. Not in that scope, uh, of course. But I would I believe that he probably does miss his his former life, where he had all the he had many trappings of you know wealth and privilege without half the responsibility. Uh, he's got the weight of his world on his shoulders. He's got an FBI investigation into his campaign. He's trying to, you know, keep quiet and hidden his vast uh, financial and undisclosed financial relationships around the world. I mean, it's it's no cakewalk. You know, it's interesting, uh, Congressman, is that he, I, the way I think that he looks at the president, this is my observation, is through a business construct. He thinks he's running a big corporation, which is a little bit different than sort of, you know, what we've been accustomed to for the last 200 plus years. I don't think there's any question. It's very complicated. Some 500 entities from which he derives income from. 
Uh, and that also brings us, you know, obviously to, you know, a, a proposal does not an accomplishment make in terms of the tax proposal he's put out, but we know that uh, th there's quite possible that he will benefit enormously from that type of tax proposal. But Greta, you know, I won't ever have this problem in terms of my hair changing color, but you know, we've seen it over and over again with presidents, uh, with, with the first four years, the second four years, they age very quickly. And that's because there is an enormous amount of stress that comes with that job, all of our jobs, but particularly the presidency of the United States. He shouldn't be that shocked. Governor, it certainly seems that we're doing a lot of saber rattling with a very dangerous country, North Korea. And certainly tonight, the report that they had a failed launch, but nonetheless an attempted launch of a short range uh, missile. Um, you know, this is probably, I think, this is his biggest challenge. And every, frankly, well, other presidents before him, but it's just gotten so bad now. Right. No, and we're going to have to do something about North Korea. Here's what scares me about the president's foreign policy. Um, you know, I don't disagree with some of the things he's done. I, I was glad that he made the statement that he did about chemical weapons. The problem is there is no evidence that he has any real game plan. He does this stuff. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. But there's no long-term strategy here. Uh, that's, what, that's what makes me very nervous. I, I think many of us sort of who pay attention to foreign policy are relieved that uh, uh, James Mattis is the defense secretary because he, we know, even though he may be a little more hawkish than some of us uh, are, we know that he has a plan. We know that he has vast experience. Don has, Donald Trump has no a plan. I, I laughed in the beginning at the quote uh, when he said, I'm a guy who, who, who pays attention to details. He doesn't know the details of any of this stuff, and it, it appears often not to care. So that's what I'm very worried about North Korea, not because we don't have to do something about it, because we do. Uh, but because I don't know what his plan is, and I don't think he knows what his plan is. And, and, and that Evan, can get you in a lot of trouble. And, Evan, a lot of the plans for the past presidents is just keep everybody at the table talking so nothing happens. But the problem is keeping North Korea at the table. They've had five uh, nuclear right. tests already. Another one's coming. Is that, is that we may get them to the table talking, but they're still they're still going forward. Well, absolutely. And it was, we've, we've taken an approach, uh, both parties have taken an approach over the last few decades that has not yielded a positive outcome with, with North Korea. Look, I appreciate a stronger stance with North Korea. I think it sends the right message to China. China's the key in all of this. To a peaceful resolution. I, I liked a lot of what Tillerson said today, taking the pressure off China and North Korea, at least attempting to, with regard to unification of the of the Korean Peninsula and uh, the goal of uh, not having the goal of regime change. These kinds of things. I think they're making a lot of the right moves. Uh, of course, then I get a little nervous when President Trump, seemingly on a whim, says that we may be headed for a major, major conflict. And That's the kind of statement that has to be very carefully. Counted. Calculated, and I'm not sure it was. And of course, they're watching, they're listening. Anyway, gentlemen, thank you all. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.